So I just want to remind you a little bit about the importance of participating in the class. So even though this is a video, still have your book handy and try to focus on that. Uh, use your notebook, use a pen and just focus on that. And that this is of course important for our classes too. So <clears throat> if you haven't done this already, please make sure you go into Google Classroom. Uh, you can search for that in any search engine. And make sure when you go to the Google Classroom website, you look for uh, how to sign up for a class. If you can look at this slide, you can see the class codes for all the relevant classes. So if you could sign up for that and um, before the next time we meet that would be very useful because you'll be getting lots of um, participation points if you complete those tasks in this website. So this particular slide is up for class 078. Please make sure you check the dates here. There's of course been a lot of changes due to the coronavirus but most of the dates will still be correct especially for midterms, finals and projects. If you have any other questions about the dates, please let me know. This slide is for classes o, class 035. Again, all the information here is about the midterms, the finals, the projects. Some of the dates are, weren't decided because of the problems with the virus, but if we, if you have any questions, please ask me on Kakao or in the classroom or through my email. These dates are for class 048. And if you could send me any requests for information if it's not very clear through this slide. And also, hopefully, the slide will be correct with regards to the dates for the finals projects, the midterms and things like that. This slide is about the information uh, with regards to midterms and finals. So uh, if we haven't done the midterms yet, please look at those uh, this slide and check out the pages of and the units that need to be covered. I've given for the midterms units one, two, three and four and in unit one you can see the vocabulary is on pages seven to nine and the grammar I think is on pages 19 and 20 and um, if we if, uh, for the other um, for the finals we are doing five units five six and seven and you can see all the pages are outlined there for the grammar and the vocabulary Don't forget to log on to the Google Classroom and onto Kakao Open Chat, which you should have by now. If not, please talk to another class member or myself. If any of you are interested in working in England, please message me and uh, I will let you know more about that. There are some schools in England where you can study IELTS and other courses and uh, this particular school is near my hometown so please go there if you want to study English I hope you remember to log on to IQ online all of that information is at the front of the book if you go to the front of your book you can see there are steps to sign on for that and I recommend you do that because some of the work that I'll ask you to do is online. Some of the listening activities are online so I hope that you can do that. And Here are the passwords for each class so if you look over them and then work, uh, log on to that website that's at the front page of the book. This particular slide is um, the link to the project work. I hope that you're coming along with that and make sure you have a team ready to uh, finish that project and all the information is on the table which you can get through the link that link is found on any of the slides that I've sent to you via Kakao Open Chat so you should be able to connect to that and 
um, start to work on that project. So this is the midterm test. It's for role plays, and if you've if we've already done the midterm, then don't worry about this. But if we if we've not if we've not done it yet, please work through that and make sure you have a team and make sure everybody participates in the role play. And um, we'll do that at the appointed time for the midterms. So we're continuing with Unit 6 and as you remember Unit 6 is about taking responsibility for our environment and um, the unit is on page 126. Um, we've really got to care for our planet and we are so obsessed with, with materialism and everything is so convenient but in our obsession about making life much easier we've also made our environment much worse and so how can we improve this also another big problem is oil we are completely obsessed with natural resources even though they are so bad for the environment we're destroying our planet because of natural resources and um, we've got um, a lot of problems with that and we need to perhaps stop being so obsessed with natural resources but we rely on them so much so we have coal mines we have problems with uh, you know so much so much gas in the car and a lot of pollution and you know but we don't really consider what this is doing for our environment so we need to really weigh up this situation and see if we can change our habits we're so used to this um, there was an incident uh, many years ago in the Gulf of Mexico um, and it was in 2010 it was take 10 years ago April the 20th 2010 there was a very big explosion in the Gulf of Mexico and it was on um, an oil offshore oil rig or drilling unit called Deepwater Horizon and the damage was so extensive that um, the people responsible had to pay out a lot of money um, the actual platform was built in South Korea but it was owned by another company and uh, and a lot of people died actually the uh, around 12 to 15 workers were missing you know and 11 were killed it it was one of the worst accidents in the history of oil rigging and there's a movie about it the movie's called Deepwater Horizon and it was a 2016 American biographical disaster film and the it was directed by a director called Peter Berg and it starred um, Mark Wahlberg and John Malkovich, both really famous actors, Kurt Russell as well, and Kurt Russell's a really famous actor. And the movie actually, um, I saw the movie, it was quite shocking to see and it was quite upsetting. Um, it got a C minus on IMDB it got 7.1 out of 10 and it's not as popular as it used to be but I think it's a really good film um, and I think it was just one of those reality movies that was so haunting and so upsetting to see you know um, and the other website that reviews movies Rotten Tomatoes gave it a B minus 83 percent the critics thought it was just worthy of a B minus uh, the audience liked it though there was 82 percent of the audiences who saw the movie liked it and there's lots of critics comments there so one person who really didn't like the movie said it was a huge disservice to the to history they really didn't think it represented the situation very well um, other people just said it's an okay watch, not a great one. Some person said 
My only serious complaint about Deepwater Horizon is that it is not quite the muckraker I'd hoped for. Perhaps they wanted the companies to look worse off from this. Anyway, I recommend you watch this movie um, and I think you'd enjoy it. It's a very good film and yeah. You can either watch it or watch the trailers on YouTube. You, I think it must be on Netflix. If not, I'm sure you can find a way to download it and watch that. Here's a mind map that I'd like you to do as a group. If you can perhaps call some of your friends from the group that you're in and talk to them about this. Um, we, last time we talked about social responsibility and I'd like to continue with that theme and talk about antisocial behavior uh, and I think anti in England if somebody it commits an act of antisocial behavior then um, they can get into trouble with the police and there's all sorts of things that are included in this so in England one of the things that could be included is a, being a nuisance or being rowdy that means quite loud or inconsiderate of neighbors that's not really a crime but it's considered antisocial behavior if you're upsetting people that's considered antisocial behavior what do people do that is considered inconsiderate a nuisance or too rowdy another problem is vandalism and graffiti now, I hate it when I see a, a, a nice, a beautiful uh, wall that had been decorated, vandalized by people with just bits of paint and spray. I just think it looks ugly and it's a waste. I think graffiti can be good. Some graffiti can be very artistic, but I don't think all graffiti is. It look, looks that nice, and or well, vandalism without, you know without saying much about that is obviously really terrible for society vandalism is destroying things that belong to other people or to the government it just makes a place feel insecure makes people feel upset and angry I hate the idea of vandalism as a child I didn't really care much for it but now I feel more adamant that people should stop it another Anti, uh, another antisocial behavior is street drinking so in England you can drink in the street but if street drinking is upsetting people then it's probably not a good idea so some people just carry the alcohol in a brown paper bag <laughs> but we really in Korea I see people drinking out in the street all the time it doesn't seem to be a problem but it can be upsetting for people if the people are so drunk they don't really care about what other people think. So another thing is environmental damage including littering, dumping of rubbish and abandonment of cars. So I often see litter in England and I'm sure it's in Korea too and that includes putting trash on the floor. In my neighborhood there seems to be a lot of broken furniture just lying around and sometimes there are cars that are abandoned people who had a car just didn't want to drive it anymore it was too much money so they dumped it they just left it and abandoned it other types are begging I've seen beggars in Korea but there are also beggars in England there's beggars in every country um, and that can really make people feel upset especially if they've been harassed by beggars beggars need to uh, make money somehow but is begging on the street the right approach for them maybe not maybe there are other methods right um, another thing is fireworks misuse I remember when I was in Beijing there was an event and there was lots of fireworks but they were really dangerous and one guy got injured he got he got a firework in his face and you know it's terrible it was no safety precautions and people couldn't you know I mean people didn't really care about others it was really dangerous uh, and then another one is the in 
considerate or inappropriate use of vehicles, driving vehicles in par on onto the parks and streets and things like that. So what do Koreans consider to be antisocial behavior? And what do you as an individual consider to be antisocial behavior? Uh, make your own list, make a mind map of that. Now I want us to go to the book. And let's turn to page 129. And we're going to talk about corporate social responsibility or irresponsibility if you like because so many corporations do not care about society and the environment if we go to page 129 uh, you can see a picture of a pair of sneakers okay and you're going to listen to a lecture so you will need to use your IQ online so you should have logged in logged on by now and be able to do that you're going to listen to a lecture to a group of business students. As you listen to the lecture, gather information about ideas and responsibility in the world we live in. About, and ideas about responsibility in the world we live in. So let's go to part A. The lecture starts by defining corporate social responsibility and then discusses its importance in today's world. What do you think corporate social responsibility means? Discuss your ideas with a partner. Take notes on your discussion. So, um, what do you think that means, corporate social responsibility? I think it means taking responsibility for other people, taking responsibility for the city you live in, or work in, or where the company is based, taking responsibility for the environment and the world that we live in. I think, though, that companies don't care enough about the society we live in. If we go to part B, there's um, different. There's a list of vocabulary here. You'll need a dictionary. There are ten words here: benefit, consumer, demand, developed, fair, fine, ignore, impact, pollute, and profit. All of these are words which are connected to this listening. So, I recommend that you try to look these words up. Is there anything difficult there? You've got. Um, one, two, three, four, five nouns, three verbs, and two adjectives. Okay, try to find what those words mean. Then let's go to page 130. On page 130, at the top of the page, you can see part A is a lecture that you need to listen to. As you listen, complete the notes. So you've got here all the missing words that you need to complete. And so there's a lot of um, help there, just listen and fill in the blanks. And then section B there at the bottom on page 130 is read the statements, read the statements and uh, write true or false. Okay, so um, these days more people are concerned about the impact companies are having have on the world we live in. True or false? I think it's true. Okay, and then if we continue, we can see that on the next page we can we need to complete the statements. So, for example, number one, the professor says it's understandable that companies a want to make a profit, b find it difficult to be sociable, respons socially responsible. Is it A or B? I personally think it's A. I think they want to make a profit. Of course, they want to survive. So do questions 1 to 5 there on page 131. At the bottom of page 131 is the vocabulary quiz. And there are 10 questions that go on to page 132. So you can see that number 1, it's a noun. As a... What word is it? I always try to buy products from companies I know well. I think the answer there is consumer. It's a noun. So go through the rest of them. Finish all of that. The ten words there are the same words that we had on page 129. Then go to the discussion questions at the bottom of page 132. 
How important is it for companies to be socially responsible? What are the benefits? Do you think it's very important or just a little important? I personally think it's very important. Who do you think is more responsible for the actions of a company? The company itself or the individual decision makers? So who's responsible for that? Do we make, do we, are we responsible because we bought the product? Maybe we are. Uh, let's go to page number 134. It's the second listening activity. And again, you'll need to go onto IQ Online. Um, so at the top of the page, it says you're going to listen to an excerpt from a college seminar. As you listen to the excerpt, gather information and ideas about responsibility in the world we live in. So in this, uh, if you can see, the preview to the listening, the students are discussing the issue of personal responsibility. Before you listen, think about the things you are responsible for in your daily life. Note your ideas and then share them with the class. Or you can note your ideas and share them on, on our chat rooms or Kakao or talk or whatever. Okay. Here are some 10 words or vocabulary that you need to read aloud. Appropriate is an adjective. So... Another adjective there is sensible. There's um, two phrasal verbs, check up on and help out. There's uh, another adjective actually, guilty. And then there's a phrase, in charge of. And then there are three verbs, influence, lie and trust. So if you could find out what those words mean from the dictionary and let's go to part A or, um, at the bottom of page 134 listen to the first part of the seminar on personal responsibility note the examples each student gives of ways in which they take res individual responsibility at home so you've got four people there Naomi, Michael, Nina and Mark you're going to listen and take notes and then go to the next page on page 135 part B Circle the answer that best completes each statement. Number one, all of the students feel it is important to help out at home, or some of the students feel it is important to help out at home. So choose the right words from questions one, two, three, four, or five. Then part C on page 135, listen to the rest of the seminar. seminar. Circle the answer that best completes each statement number one all many or none of the students say their parents always want to know where they are okay and then there's questions two three four and five choose the correct words and fill in the blanks um, part D complete the sentences Mark says his parents jum, 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 him a lot when he is out so uh, try to remember the listening and answer those questions and then part E what two reasons does Neil give to explain why his parents don't like him playing video games? Does he think his parents are right to be worried? What's your opinion? Okay, so that's about video gaming and why that upsets parents. And then let's go to page 136, and this is about vocabulary. And you can see here uh, the, the you're meant to take the words which are in bold and uh, match them with the um, definition of the words from A to J. So the words in bold from 1 to 10, you need to match them from A to J. So, for example, the word appropriate, it's not appropriate. Appropriate is an adjective, okay? And uh, suitable or right for a particular situation, personal use, it's J. So number one is J. But do the rest there, try to finish that. Now let's turn to page number 142 and we're going to look at speaking skills and today we want to talk about leading a group discussion. When discussing a topic in a group it is important to choose one person to lead the discussion so we need a leader. The role of the leader is to guide the flow of the discussion. The leader starts the discussion, gets comments from members of the group so this is keeps the discussion on topic, ends the discussion. So then we have 
Uh, here are some phrases you can use when you're leading a discussion. So page 142, make sure you stay on that page. Starting the discussion. The topic I'd like to discuss today is jum jum jum. Today we're going to discuss jum jum jum. Our topic today is jum jum jum. Getting comments from different people. What do you think, Masood? Kelly, what's your opinion? Do you have anything to add, Charlene? Keeping on topic. I think we need to return to the topic. What is your view on jum jum jum? Sorry, but can you keep to the topic? Let's get back to the topic and then ending the discussion. That's all we have time for today. To sum up then, to summarize the main points. Okay, so that's what leading a group discussion means. Let's go to page 143 and part A. Listen to this excerpt from a discussion. So you'll need your IQ online. Complete the discussion with phrases you hear and practice the discussion in a group of four. So here do parts one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Fill in the blanks. I think you can use the phrases, okay, from the other page. That should be helpful. Okay. So now I want to talk about a game that I want you to do with your group. Um, you can use your Kakao Talk or any other way to communicate with them. Um, this game is about. It's called Awards and. You know, I know that uh, recently the movie called um, Parasite won Oscars and everyone's really happy about that and BTS won a few awards, I guess everyone's happy about that too. Now, first of all, I want you to mind map all the awards you can think of. So there's music awards, there's acting awards, there's all sorts of creative awards that people get. There's even Nobel Prize, these sort of awards. So in your group, think about different awards that people get and around the world. Some people get awards for, you know, uh, movies, you know, like Oscars. But there's other awards. There's the Mahatma Gandhi Peace Prize. There's the Pulitzer Prize. There's prizes for writing books. So there's, there's many kinds of prizes. Now, I want you to make a brainstorm of invented awards. For example, best glasses award for the actor who wears the best glasses. The thing is, the rule is they must be positive. It mustn't be a negativism or criticism of anybody. So, if we just take this one as an example, the best glasses award for the actor who wears the best glasses. Um, and there's lots of actors who wear glasses, right? Uh, so, I mean, Jennifer Aniston wears glasses. <laughs> Lots of people wear glasses. You know, some of the people I, I don't know all the people who wear glasses, but there's a lot of people who do. Um, who looks the best in glasses? Who looks good in glasses? Who does not? Kate Blanchett wears glasses. Um, you know, Adams, Andy Samberg, Courtney Cox. Rihanna wears glasses. Justin Timberlake wears glasses. Uh, so Idris Elba wears glasses. Yeah, lots of famous actors wear glasses. But who wears the best glasses? So you can think about that. Choose two categories of awards that you would like to find candidates for. Okay. Uh, maybe you want to say the woman with the longest hair, whatever. Each group member describes someone you know who deserves that reward okay so you then describe that person you talk about them one person in the group does the note taking so this really is a, is a group chat thing online and you can discuss and choose the candidates from the list and then you share with the class maybe you can share with the open forum that we have if we've got open chat at this time you can do that so this is the sort of uh, basically like a kind of a task based around um, making an award for people. So here's some questions. Uh, the first question is. Um, 
should companies try to clean the environment? Should companies try to clean the environment? Um, what do you think? Second question is, should companies try to help the local communities? Number three, should companies give money to charity? Should companies follow the local laws? Number five, should companies stop child labor? Number six, should companies follow all the safety regulations? Number seven, should companies increase workers' wages? Number eight, should companies give free health care to workers? So the first question there is about the environment. Do you think Korean companies are focused on helping the environment to stay uh, beautiful and natural? Or do they focus too much on making money and not enough on nature and the ecosystem? That's number one. Number two, do they help the local communities? So Korea is quite a wealthy country, but there's still a lot of need here. There's still poverty, and there's still some problems in society. Do you think Samsung and LG and Hyundai need to help and make a positive contribution to the cities where they're at and give to the poor and help in the community? That's number three. Do they need to give money to charities? What kind of charities could Samsung, LG or Hyundai give to? There's lots of charities over there. We can have there are charities within Korea, and then there is charity. There are charities in other countries. Should they help disabled people, the elderly, homelessness, homeless people, uh, disabled people, children without parents, orphan orphans? Number four, do should they follow the local laws? If they if Korean companies work in other countries, should they follow the laws there? Or should they just do what they would normally do in Korea? Um, and should they break Korean laws? That's another question. What about child labor? I know there isn't child labor in South Korea at the moment. Or, or I don't know whether there was in the past. But in other countries, there's child labor where children are exploited for very low pay. Should that happen? Should Korean companies allow that to happen in their factories and then there's uh, safety regulations do you think it's appropriate for them to cut corners to save money or should they follow all the safety regulations that are outlined by the local governments so what about wages should they pay the least wage possible or should they give them pay rises what would be the best thing and the right thing to do there? And how about free health care for workers? Should they give them insurance, health insurance, so that they can get free or cheap health care? What do you think? Discuss those with your teams. Here's a, some people sorting trash. I've got lots of questions to ask about the environment and about taking responsibility in society and I'm going to talk about juvenile crime at the moment and if we go to the extra questions here and read them together as, uh, in pairs or in groups or online if you answer these yourself first and then you can uh, perhaps um, contact your partners and compare answers together so question one is juvenile crime a problem in your country? So in South Korea, are middle school or high school students committing crimes? Are they doing any drugs? Are they stealing things? Are they fighting? Are they doing other crimes? Number two, what kind of crimes do young people commit? So what kind of thing, what bad things do young people do in Korea? I mean, in England, it's a little different. There is some drugs in England. Not a lot, but there is a little bit. But in Korea, there are no drugs. So are there crimes that young people do that's specific for South Korea? Question number three. 
Are you afraid of young people in your country? When you walk down the street and you see a gang of boys, how do you feel about them? Mostly, I'm never, I'm never afraid of young people in Korea because they're all like studying in academies and they're not really in gangs. Number four. At what age do young people turn to crime? So in England, I think people turn to crime when they're very young. Um, but what about Korea? I think it depends on their circumstances. Are they from a poor family? How much money do they have? Number five. Why has juvenile crime increased in the past decade? So why has youth crime increased in America and England? There's a lot of drugs and knife crime and bad things in America and England. Number six. What is the profile? What are they like, the average juvenile criminal? Are they... How young are they? What is their background? What kind of neighborhood do they come from? What kind of problems do they have? Do they have any health problems? Do they have any family problems? Do they have any mental health problems? Are they finding it difficult to study? Question number seven. Should young people go to prison if they commit serious crimes? Well, we had a case in England where some young people committed very serious crimes and they both went to adult prison for a time. Um, should that happen in Korea too? I don't know. Next question, number eight. How much are parents to blame if their children become criminals? Should we blame the parents if their children are criminals? What do you think? Do you think parents are to blame? What do you think about that? Number nine. Why do you think so many young people have lost their respect for authority? Why do young people hate governments and police? And what parts do you think movies, the internet, video games play uh, and uh, play in leading young people to crime? Are young people influenced by these things? Are they doing bad things because of video games and movies? In the past, people blamed horror movies, but is that true? So answer those 10 and answer the 10 on the other side. So you've got another 10 there. The first question is, what are the main reasons children become criminals? Now the 10 at the end, what questions would you like to ask a juvenile criminal? So work on your own first, then compare your notes with your friends and try to complete those questions. Here's another activity that you can do alone first and then compare with other people in your class. The first thing here is, it's a letter um, and I want you to answer the letter the best way that you can. So the person it's to is mum and dad. The person it's from is their son, Mike. Okay, so let me read the letter to you and then I want you to think of what the parents could say or how they could answer. Dear mum and dad, I tried to ring you earlier today, but couldn't get through for some reason. Now I've borrowed some notepaper and stamps just to let you know what has happened. Last night in the youth hostel at Innsbruck, someone stole my money, my passport, my interrail card and my camera. I'm furious that I hadn't put everything in my sleeping bag with me as I usually do. This morning I went straight to the police but they weren't very hopeful about getting my things back. The th the thief the thief has probably cleared out of the country. I've hitchhiked to Salzburg to try and get some help from Uncle Harry and Aunt May, Auntie May, but they seem to be away. All the blinds are down and nobody answers the phone. Still, they aren't expecting me till next week. I don't know where to I don't know where or how I'll sleep tonight. Perhaps at the station. Thank God it's warm. Please, please, could you send me some money as quickly as possible, care of the main post office? I wish I had the money for a telegram. Do hurry. I'll try to do something about the passport and interrail card tomorrow. But money is the most important thing. I've got very little food left. Okay, so Mike's not starving. He has got a little bit of food. And I think you could live a few days without food. But you do need water. So hopefully he can find some water. So his first problem is, he tried to call them, but they didn't answer, right? And don't, 
and so that's a that was the first problem why didn't they answer second problem was he had to borrow some notepaper and stamps and that's why he's written this letter so he's strange he's got no notepaper and no stamps then he talks about the real situation last night in the youth hostel somebody stole his money so he has nothing to buy food with or travel with his passport so he can't go to other nations and his interrail card so he can't travel anywhere and his camera so he can't take any pictures in my opinion the first thing he needs back is his money the second thing is his passport the third thing is his interrail card I think the camera is not as important so he feels angry and he usually puts it in his sleeping bag the police can't help him okay and it said the thief may have gone to another country so he hitchhiked that's dangerous and he went to see his uncle and auntie but they weren't there so now he has to wait for them to get back and they might be another week now where is he going to sleep he's got nowhere to sleep but a station and stations are not always the safest of places so he's asking for money he's asking them uh, uh, to send the money to the post office and I guess he'll need to tell them what post office that is or maybe they'll need to look it up but this is this this uh, activity was made before the internet so maybe they have to use a yellow page a, the yellow pages basically you have to travel in time back in time and think what life might have been like in the 1970s and try to answer this question so this is a role play that you'll need to do with your team I guess again you'll need to go online with them and talk to them and uh, you are social workers who have been assigned to a family with multiple difficulties so in England if there's a family with problems there's often a lot of social workers that work with them one for every family member now this family are known for fly tipping dumping old furniture all over the town people get very angry I don't like it in my neighborhood when I see lots of old pieces of furniture all around the town it drives me absolutely crazy and Hair Bang Chon for whatever reason is full of broken furniture it drives me absolutely balmy so the other thing here is the children don't attend school commit crimes and don't listen to their parents so the parents do try to tell them not to do this but they seem to be absolutely powerless and the children don't go to school <coughs> they, <coughs> they don't get an education so they're undereducated they're not trying very hard at school and I wonder why maybe it's because their parents didn't go to school maybe there's reasons around that so um, that needs to be addressed we need to make sure that they go to school every day that they study uh, maybe they're finding it too hard maybe they have learning difficulties so the other thing is they commit crimes what kind of crimes is it stealing vandalism antisocial behavior in some way maybe they harass people so we need to look at their behavior too why are they committing crimes why aren't they going to school what is it about them that uh, makes them this way and the last bit what sort of advice would you give the parents well it's difficult isn't it what would you tell the parents to do really the parents need to learn how to parent uh, be parents how to parent their children and there's lots of skills needed in parenting right and parents can develop these skills through parenting classes first of all they need to show love and affection every child needs love and affection they also need to deal with stress and they need relationship skills and life skills and behavioral management and health if they show that they're healthy and they're looking after their own bodies their children will see that and try to copy them right so I think um, if the parents are not well educated perhaps they could demonstrate their willingness to learn they could go back to school and um, learn how to learn something learn a new skill learn math if children see their parents trying to make an effort maybe they will follow their example so work through this role play yourself and, and first of all 
talk to your team and then decide what you want to do about that role play. Thanks for listening to this video. I hope that you learn to take more responsibility. Here's a trash dump here. It's somebody in there. What are they looking for? I don't know, but it's a terrible place. I hope that we're responsible with recycling and dealing with our trash. And let's make the world a better place.